Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of yet another digital MP4 player. This one attempts to replicate the iPod Nano 7th generation, which is the current uh, iPod Nano on the market. But the key word here is attempt because there's a lot of elements that it doesn't get quite right. For instance, the screen is still 1.8 inches, the same size as most of these generic Shenzhen based uh, MP4 players, instead of the larger uh, real estate you get on the actual iPod. Also, you notice two more buttons down below for skip tracks uh, as opposed to on the real iPod Nano that has only just one home button down below. But otherwise, you can see the placement on the sides as well as the overall kind of sleek aluminum shell is the same you would find on an actual iPod Nano. So taking a closer look at the design here, on the bottom you have access to a mini USB port for charging and syncing. It takes about two hours to completely charge, and it's a simple plug and play solution. So you can just drag and drop documents as well as uh, files like music, videos, uh, photos directly from a computer into this. It acts basically as a flash drive of sorts, uh, but it is using mini USB as opposed to micro USB or you know a lightning pin adapter if it was trying to completely replicate Apple. So that is something to note. It also has a micro SD card slot for expanding the memory past the uh, built-in flash storage, which is kind of nifty to have. There's also a 3.5mm headphone jack on the bottom here for listening. Powering the unit on, you can see that the user interface is almost the same as most of these uh, Chinese MP3, MP4 players we've checked out for the past few years. On here though, it makes a bit more sense just because the controls, which also correspond to skip tracks, are also laid out in this horizontal view so that if I navigate to left and right using these icons, at least it's not positioned up and down like it was on the previous iPod uh, Nano clone and before play that we saw before. So here it's actually quite intuitive and you can see that we have a few animations to correspond to the various features. So taking, taking a quick look starting with the music function we have access to a very basic music player on here. Uh, allows us to play back mp3 files uh, just fine. You can also load a few other formats. It doesn't support any cover arts on here unfortunately but you can have access to things such as uh, the title of the song. There's an equalizer view as well as the track in terms of the minutes that's being playing, volume controls in the very top, skip looping controls, equalizer settings, as well as the bit rate of the uh, actual song that you're using. Um, otherwise, I can then skip tracks and it's uh, pretty easy. As far as the loading of audiobooks, it still is a decent experience because even if you pause the music, it kind of rem it remembers the uh, placement uh, pretty accurately. I've had some issues with uh, even cheaper mp3 players in the past where if you pause it and play it, it seems to slightly you know, tweak uh, the placement, so it uh, either fast forwards it a little bit or rewinds it a little bit before it plays back again, which can be an issue if you're listening to a longer audiobook, but on here it seems to be quite responsive and easy to use. When you're done, tap on the menu key for a few seconds longer to go back into that main UI. Other things on here, a very basic video player, but uh, again, it does support only this uh, seemingly proprietary video codec, which is unfortunately, so it doesn't support the dedicated MP4 format um, as the MP4 player's name might suggest. So that's a little ironic, uh, but otherwise there are a few sample clips that it plays back uh, fairly well just because the screen itself is pretty bright and has a decent viewing experience. Um, I would say a little bit of an improvement over previous iterations, but it definitely still washes out under extreme angles because it's not an IPS panel. And uh, you can definitely watch a few clips on here, but not ideal for longer movies, of course. So I can go back home again by tapping on the menu key for a few seconds. Next feature on here is a digital voice recorder using the actual microphone on the back and that picks up sound nicely I guess for some quick voice memos for a shopping list, maybe if you're a student in a lecture hall, it does a decent job. But it's not a noise cancelling microphone, so as there's more sound around you, if you're outdoors in the wind, it's not going to be as effective. But uh, that's to be expected and it's a nice extra found on here and you can view back and listen back to your recordings directly by tapping on the voice um, application here. There's also an FM radio on here which allows you to preset channels, tune channels, and scan channels, but it requires a headphone to be plugged in acting as the antenna in order for you to operate this uh, function. Next, there's a very basic photo viewer or photo browser that plays back uh, JPEG images just fine. Um, it's actually not too bad as far as speed is concerned, so you can see that uh, loading up pictures is fairly fast. Uh, doesn't really take too much of a loading time, which was an issue in earlier generation MP4 players, where even though it could technically display images, if it was too high res, it took almost a minute to completely load up this tiny, tiny photo. So um, it's a pretty good you know, application here. You can use it as a digital photo frame uh, to show perhaps quick shots with a family and friends. There's also set up to change languages, the animation in terms of the screen, the brightness controls, and the timeout controls to conserve on battery. 
Finally, there's a basic ebook reader, but it's really just a text reader that displays line after line of text. It does work, and but it's a fairly rudimentary and really only ideal for baby addresses, contacts, basic information. If you're actually reading a very long book, you'll be quickly annoyed by the fact that you have to press on these keys to turn page every few seconds to actually start to read. So there are a few sample clips on here. I'm going to actually just go back here and exit. So there is a quick story here. It's actually using this inverted mode. So this is uh, A Dog's Tale by Mark Twain. You can see that the chapter, the words here are really cut off, but it is possible to read. Um, and it's not too terrible as far as brightness, but again, it's really just the screen that's uh, very cramped. So it makes the process very tedious. Afterwards, if we try to exit out of this, there's a few other features, including games. Um, basic games are installed on here. There's a Boxman, Bricks, Snake, and Road. So you have those four options. Better than some, op some variants in the past that only came with one. So if we take a look at uh, Boxman, for instance, let's tap on this one more time. So we have the ability to navigate and uh, push these boxes around so that they uh, meet and touch each of these four red contact points and then advances onto the next level and also times you in the process. So it's basically a, bu a puzzle game. Now, one of the issues with this, however, is the extremely limited control since it's trying to copy you know, the newest iPod Nano, you don't have physical scroll wheel here to use as the up, down, left, and right keys. So to navigate through some of these up and down things, you have to use the toggles over here. So that makes a very unintuitive experience, and so that kind of cripples the process, unfortunately. Uh, the other games here, same thing with Snake. Uh, you know, it works decently, but again, to move that snake and to eat the tiles, you are forced to use some of the controls here and also some of the controls there, which isn't the the best experience in the world. So all in all, I would say that as a digital MP3 player, it definitely works. Some of the extras on here is, is good. It's a nice upgrade over some of those older MP3 players that we checked out before from Shenzhen China, but you know, it's still not the best on the market. With that being said, it is very inexpensive and the construction quality made out of aluminum is quite impressive at this price point. Still, the actual navigational controls, although they make sense in the main menu now, don't really make sense under games and some certain other applications. So that's something to quickly point out. Thanks for watching this video first look here at OS Reviews as well as our video review. You can check out more details in our written review, but for now this has been our video. Thank you for watching.